Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God in Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and Union in the Mount Pleasant area. Well, praise our God. We're studying the uh, Gospel of, of Luke. Uh, we're in chapter 11, amen. And today we're on part two of uh, Shameless Persistence in Prayer. The principle of shameless persistence in prayer. Amen. Uh, we focus on verses one through four in our last message, and we're not going to be able to get into that. We're going to read those scriptures, but you need to go back and get the broadcast, our last broadcast, Shameless Persistence, part one, uh, at KAZ, or you can go to uh, YouTube, okay? Praise God, it's on YouTube. All right. Now, begin reading in the 11th chapter. Verse 1, let's just pray. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, we ask you to lift me out of myself, uh, that I can be a vessel, a voice that you will work through, Lord. I am praying that you anoint my words, Lord. And God, uh, 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 these words will penetrate deep in the heart of those who are viewing this broadcast, Lord. And God, that you would move them uh, to that place of shameless, persistence, overcoming, prevailing, travailing prayer. Amen? Well, praise our God in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So he taught them the Lord's Prayer. Amen. And then he proceeded on to teach them the principle of shameless persistence in prayer. Shameless, persistent, Overcoming, prevailing, travailing prayer. Well, praise our God. Now, I said the principle of shameless persistence in prayer. And the definition for principle is a fundamental truth. A fundamental truth about prayer is what Jesus was teaching. Amen. He went on and taught them this principle of shameless persistence in prayer. Amen. Amen. According to Google Dic Dictionary, uh, principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. For example, the basic principles. Of Christianity. Amen. So, a fundamental truth. Well, praise our God. And so he went on in, in verse 5, and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing set to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. 
Verse 18, Jesus says, I say unto you that though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. <laughs> Amen. Praise our God. The brother was knocking. Hey, I need some help. I got this friend here. Hey, uh, uh, I don't have anything to set before him. And his friend says, could have been his best friend. But his friend said, I'm in the bed. My children are in the bed. It's after midnight. I cannot get up to help you. But Jesus says, though he wouldn't help the brother because he was his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will get up and he will give him as many loaves as he needs. Importunity. Importunity is urgent persistence. There was an urgency. The brother was in a crisis. You can sense this in his heart. You can sense it in his expression. Open up. And the guy says, no. Open up. No. I need your help. And though he wouldn't have done it because he's his friend, but because of his importunity, his urgent persistence, he's going to get up. He's going to give him what he needs. Praise. Oh, God. Well, importunity is defined as an urgent persistence. And, and imp, per, imp, <laughs> uh, I mean this word. Anyway, uh, an importunate <laughs> person is one who persists in asking for something to the point of being troublesome. Importunate person. <laughs> hey, well, praise our God. Listen, listen. But this was not the first time that Jesus taught uh, on importunity or shameless persistence in prayer. He gave the parable in Luke 18, verses one through eight, of uh, the parable of the persistent widow, teaching the same principle. It says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray and not faint, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and how shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. <laughs> Amen. Praise our God. And, and, and this was a wicked man. He didn't care about God or, or man. And yet, because of this woman's importunity, she persisted. She continued to come to him to the point of troublesome. This brother says, you know what? I'm going to move on this. I'm going to avenge her quickly because if I don't, she's going to weary me. Hear what the unjust said, judge says? How much more are you a heavenly father who, who bears long with you? <laughs> Ah, uh, and then Jesus asked this question. When the Son of Man come, shall he even find faith on the earth? Amen. Because 
many will give up because they didn't see God answer their prayer fast enough. They didn't shamelessly persist. They uh, took what looked like no. They became discouraged. They quit before the answer came. And Jesus says, when the Son of Man returned, will they even find faith? Because uh, what's coming on the earth and, and what folks are seeing, uh, folks are losing confidence. They're getting discouraged. Uh, people are discouraged about the uh, uh, COVID-19. Yeah, they, they, they're already losing faith. There's, there are many people who are not rooted and grounded. They are already losing faith. Uh, they prayed for loved ones. They didn't see God raise them up. Uh, neither did they shameless persist. They were not agonizing in prayer. I guarantee you they didn't do no fasting, crying out to God. Amen. Uh, well, praise our God. We've seen people raised up. And we've interceded for people. Yes, we've seen people die as well. And uh, But we believe there's one as we saw raised up. God raised them up because we prayed. Well, pleading the blood of Jesus over us. Amen? Well, praise our God. Listen, so we told you that importunity is, an, is urgent, persistent, okay? An importunate person is one who persists in asking for something to the point of being troublesome, <laughs> according to GodQuestions.org. Amen? Yeah. Amazing, huh? Amazing. Well, praise our God. Listen. Amen. And so he goes on to verse 9 and 10, and he says, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given. Amen. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, listen to the words of Jesus, the word of God cannot lie. He says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Okay. Now, to really grasp the meaning of that, you need to go back to the Greek, okay? So I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Amen? Praise our God. And so, the reading from the Amplified Bible. <laughs> Amen. All right. So, I say unto you, ask and keep on asking, and it shall be given you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you shall find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door shall be open. For everyone who asks and keep on asking receives, and he who seeks and keep on seeking finds, and him who knocks and keep on knocking, the door shall be open. What father among you, if his son asks for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? And if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good gifts, gifts that are to their advantage, to him or, or to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask and continue to ask him? Praise our God. Ask and keep on asking. And listen, and, and, and <laughs> uh, what more precious gift can the Father give you than the Holy Spirit? And I don't believe you need to beg and plead for the Holy Ghost. No, he says ask. Amen. I believe you need to ask. You need to receive. You need to say thank you. And you receive by faith. Amen. Well, praise our God. Now, I know that some of you out there are not going to believe that you have the Holy Ghost unless you have a sign. But signs are for unbelievers, okay? Signs follow those that believe. Uh, believers are not following after signs, 
Believers walk by faith. Believers receive from God by faith. And I believe the place that God is bringing us as the church, he wants us to walk in revelation faith, walk in the faith that the Holy Ghost is revealed to our spirit uh, and walk in that faith. You know, uh, but the, the enemy wants to keep, keep us to a place where we're not going to believe unless we see it, unless we feel it. And y'all get mad with me, so let me leave that alone. Praise our God. Listen, listen. Amen. Great word. Ask, keep on asking, and it shall be given you. Seek, keep on seeking, and you shall find. Knock, keep on knocking, and the door shall be opened. It is the concept, it's the principle of shameless persistence, overcoming, prevailing, Prayer, shameless, persistent. Well, praise our God, the Syrophoenician woman in Matthew 15 or maybe 17, the Syrophoenician woman. She said, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus' primary ministry was to, to the Jews. This woman was a Gentile. She said, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciple says, send her away. She, she, she's troubling us. And uh, of course, uh, that was uh, a normal attitude toward Gentiles. Send her away. And finally, Jesus responded to her. And she fell down and, uh, came, and, and worshiped him. Well, I'm not sure whether she fell down. But the Bible says she worshiped him. Huh. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, it is not good, it's not meat to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. You know, healing belongs to the children, okay? It's not good for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Yeah, that was almost like saying the N-word to a black person. It's not good to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Now, she could have got ticked off about that and she says, I'm out of here. But her daughter never really got delivered. And perhaps she could see in Jesus' face that though he was using the vernacular of the day, she could see the love of God in his heart. And she didn't get offended. And she says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Just give me a crumb. And Jesus says, woman, great is your faith. Be it done unto you. Praise our God. She would not take what looked like no for an answer. She persists. The disciples are sent away. She, can, she persists. Have mercy on me, son of David. Jesus says, I can't take the children's bread and give it to the dog. Have mercy on me, son of David. She persisted. And she got what she wanted. Because she knew Jesus had to answer. And she persisted and she had heard about the miracles and she's heard about his heart his compassion and faith demanded <laughs> amen that jesus respond and she did and he did well praise god shameless persistent well listen listen it is not unbelief. It is not unbelief to keep asking in prayer for the same thing. It is not unbelief to keep asking in prayer for the same thing. Amen. It is not unbelief to keep asking in prayer for the same thing. When you ask, keep on asking until you receive the answer. Keep on asking until God says yes. And if he says yes, then you stop praying and you begin to believe and you begin to praise God as you wait for the manifestation. Manifestation. Or you keep on praying until God says no. And you don't have to pray anymore. He already said no. So you pray until the answer comes, okay? Well, praise God. I know there's 
good people out there, amen, uh, dynamic individuals, men of great faith who say that if you pray the same things over, you pray in unbelief. I disagree. Now, I'm not saying that's never the case, but as a rule, I disagree. What do you mean? Well, in uh, 1 Kings 18, amen, you know, Elijah had this conflict with the prophets of Baal and, and so forth. Uh, he prayed and the fire came and consumed the sacrifices. And then he began to, you know, and they killed the, the false prophets and stuff like that. The people fell on their faces as God, the Lord God is God. And so it hadn't rained for quite a while. And so uh, the brother got down and put his face between his knees. He was really into this thing. Put his face in between his knees and he began to cry out to God for rain. And then he sent his servant over the cliff to look. He come back and says, there's nothing. He put his head down and he cried out to God again. And he says, go, nothing. Seven or eight times he cried out to God with his head between his knees in urgency, earnest prayer. And finally the brother says, I see a cloud about the size of a man's fist or a man's hand. He said, praise God, get ready for a downpour. Listen. Did he pray in unbelief? No. He's a man of great faith. And the Bible says, amen, that we should imitate his faith. He was a man of like passion as we are. And yet he prayed, amen, that God would not send a rain. There was no rain for however long it was, three years or whatever, three and a half years. Listen, and he prayed again that God give rain and he gave rain. Now, I didn't tell you he prayed seven times, so... <laughs> Well, praise our God. Listen, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed three times the very same prayer. Was he in unbelief? No. And I say to you, it is not unbelief to keep asking in prayer for the same thing. When you ask, keep asking until you receive the answer, until God says yes. And then you just praise God and wait for the manifestation or until God says no, then you stop praying because you've heard a clear word from God. Well, praise our God. Amen. Verse 11. If a son should ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Answer, no. If he ask for a fish, will he give him for a fish? Give him a servant? No. If you then, or, or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? No. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Praise our God. You don't have to beg and plead for the Holy Ghost, but you do have to receive by faith, knowing that God can't lie and that you've met the conditions. Well, praise our God. Well, okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, there are enemies of prayer. Amen. There are enemies of prayer. Discouragement. Discouragement. Someone said the devil was going out of business and he had a rummage sale and all his tools laid out and he had a different price on each thing and things were moving pretty fast. But there was one tool. It was the most worn of them all, but the, it was the most expensive and he couldn't sell it because he wanted too much money for it. And it was the tool of discouragement. And so needless to say, he stayed in business, okay? And that too, discouragement. It's the one he used so often. Amen. Jesus says, when the Son of Man returned, will he even find faith? Why? Because many would have become discouraged and would have given up. Amen. Praise God. They said, I ask, and I don't see it yet, but they didn't keep on asking. And they said, I sought, and I didn't find, but he, they didn't keep on seeking, okay? And they said, I knocked, 
but the door wasn't open, but they didn't keep on knocking, believing God, keep on knocking in faith, believing that God could not lie. And the enemy talked them out of their blessing. And by the time he talked him out of it, it was just before the great blessing was manifested. Listen, listen, discouragement. The other one is doubt. Doubt. Amen. Amen. Faith is believing what God says. Unbelief is believing what the devil says. Doubt is when you hop between the two opinions. The devil, uh, he, it's all right with him if he don't uh, uh, get you to unbelief. Uh, doubt is just as good because, amen, <laughs> if you doubt, uh, you're not going to get that answer in Because the Bible says, amen, uh, a double-minded man in James chapter 1 is unstable in all his ways, okay? Uh, he's like a, a wave of the sea tossed to and fro, okay? Amen. Uh, let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord because he's, he's doubting. He's double-minded, okay? And in Matthew 21, 21, Jesus says, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto them, and they were marveling because of the fig tree drying up from the roots when Jesus cursed it. Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, she doesn't take much faith, because he says in another place, you had faith, a grain of a mustard seed. It doesn't take much faith. Just no doubt. Listen. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Praise our God. Praise our God. Listen. Feelings. Feelings is another one. Amen. Feelings are unreliable. The enemy can work on your feelings. He can make you feel like you don't have faith. Make you feel that you're doubting. Don't operate there. And you step out on God's word. You can't, feelings are not reliable. He'll bring on you feelings of fear and all kind of stuff. Feelings are not reliable. You have to govern your life by what God says in his word. Okay? Walk in revelation faith. The faith that God uh, faith in the revelation that he has re revealed to your spirit through the word of God by the Holy Spirit. Okay, listen, listen, unforgiveness, unforgiveness is the enemy of faith. Amen. Because someone hurt you and you're still holding on to that pain. Uh, you're refusing to forgive them. Uh, it's causing anger to rise up in your heart. Um, listen. You need to ask God for help. God, lift this out of me. God will hold that person responsible. God, lift this hurt and pain out of them. Out of me, I want to release that person. I'm releasing them in your hand. Amen. Uh, judgment, you know, you, you have to deal with the judgment, okay? And uh, some people uh, are so angry uh, because they've got this unforgiveness in their heart. Uh Matthew 18, 24 talks about that guy who wouldn't forgive uh, that friend for that small amount of money after his master had forgiven him for that large amount of money, amen, and, and delivered him to the tormentors. And, and someone says there's tormentors as those little demons, amen, uh, that uh, have a legal right to come against you because you are harboring uh, unforgiveness, okay? And uh, there are people who have arthritis and, and all kind of other sickness and disease because they're harboring anger and, and unforgiveness in their heart. And so if that's you, you need to say, God, to lift this out of me. Amen. So that I can get rid of this arthritis. Well, praise our God. Shameless, persistence, persevering, overcoming prayer. May God birth that in us. May the Lord bless you, smile on you, shed his countenance upon you, give you peace.